I'd like to take you back. I'd like to take you back to the beginning, to the beginning of how I got interested in saving those who are about to die. I was in my last year of medical school where I was part of the emergency services and we were called out to a four-month-old girl. Her heart had stopped. She was suffering a cardiac arrest. And the current treatment of defibrillation did not work to save her life. I was deeply affected by what I saw, but I did not have much time to contemplate because almost immediately after, we were called out to a woman in her 30s. She had collapsed. Her heart had also stopped, and we could not save her life either. I knew I wanted to do something about this. I did not know what I wanted to do some about this. I saw that cardiac arrest was the biggest killer on the planet, with seven to nine million deaths each year, and that these people were quite young, with 40% between the age of 25 and 74 years of age. The current treatment only saves one out of 10 persons affected. So I got several ideas that I work with with my team that has led to a new treatment that we decided to call NeRescue. And we intend for that to be able to save five out of 10 of those that are affected. So the device consists of a controller and a catheter that I brought here today. The catheter is very small, which is how it's meant to be. And you'll see that in a second. In a cardiac arrest, the blood flow goes to near zero, and the chest compressions only partially replace the blood flow that is needed in this situation, which is why only the minority of patients respond to defibrillation today. This is where the NeRescue device enters the picture. The catheter is inserted into a small puncture in the leg, the femoral artery, where it is positioned into the biggest blood vessel in the body, the aorta. Here, our system automatically inflates a balloon that redirects the blood flow from the lower body to the upper body. This occlusion allows for much more of the blood flow to be able to reach the heart, which enables more of the hearts to be able to respond to defibrillation. And the increase in the blood flow to the brain protects against brain damage. The current biggest limitation in saving those who are about to die is that the brain is so sensitive to the lowered blood supply that it starts dying out very fast. But the rest of the organs are in an entirely different class and are much more resistant to the lowered blood supply. This is the principle that we use with the NeRescue device, where we take a priority on behalf of the body for which organs should receive the blood first. Today, we only have about half an hour of a time span to be able to save the life of the person. But with the use of this principle, we can increase the time span to one to two hours which allows for us to do advanced procedures, such as bring in the patient to the hospital for bypass surgery, dialysis, and even be able to put them on a heart-lung machine. That gives us weeks to do something about the underlying cause that led them to end up in this situation of sudden death. We've even shown that this principle can be used to save those who are suffering from critical bleedings below the level of the heart. For example, in car accidents, gunshots and stabbings, and even every single pregnancy-related death where the mother is bleeding out. This buys enough time for definitive surgery that can fix the problem that is causing this person to bleed out. The biggest obstacle we had to overcome is to embed the catheter with sensors and connect this to a computer. So we're precisely able to detect where the catheter ends up inside the body. 
and so that we can individualize the size of the failing to each person. One of the things that can go wrong in this situation is that the catheter might end up in one of the side vessels when you put it in. And today, without the use of x-ray or a CT scanner, we're not able to detect when that happens. And this is why this principle has not been used in the different hospital departments or out in the field where we have these situations. You might think, why haven't anybody been able to do this before if this is so good? That's because of the accelerating growth in the technology. Today, the sensors are so small that we're able to put them inside a catheter of this size and the computer inside the controller is portable and capable enough to assist us in this procedure. This was not possible back when we developed the procedure of defibrillation. And going forward, this procedure will become even more advanced. Nerescue is one example of a procedure that's combining the very best of machine intelligence with the very best of human capabilities. Obviously, this first version is not for everyone. We're targeting it for healthcare professionals who are the ones who are dealing with most of these cardiac arrests and bleedings today. But we're also developing a version that everybody else can use. So the only thing we require is that they put it on the thigh of the patient. This is for the offices, the swimming pools, the fitness centers, where we might not be able to come out to the patient fast enough. The future of medicine will be paved with procedures like this, where we take the best of our existing capabilities and lace them with the intelligence that automation and sensors will allow us to do. Dealing with death every day in this way, as I do as a medical doctor and as an entrepreneur with a resuscitation startup, you're confronted with every aspect of the human condition. This is a statement by Terence which says, I am a human being. Nothing human can ever be alien to me. And I see this in two ways. The one side is that all the horrors and tragedies that can happen to any one person, that is something that can happen to me and to those I care about. But it also means that every single amazing achievement that someone has been able to do I have that within me to also do, whether that be to get to and walk on the moon or become a human rights legend. We are the species who have put up an entire village orbiting around the planet in space. And we've even unlocked the secrets of some of the smallest particles of the universe. I am a human being. Nothing human can ever be alien to me. I take it as an opportunity to take the wonders and the amazement that we'll be able to perform using technology to solve some of these biggest problems that we're facing today. I hope you will take part in this idea and spread it with me. Thank you very much.